Bye, my cats. George? Hi guys, my name is Marlene McCohen and this is Vinny and we want to welcome you to Parent Tip Tuesday. Today we actually have a guest star. If you look in the background, you'll see Sandy, my little doggy. Uh, you know from my videos that Vinny, he is always trying to get into that closet there. So. If you watch my videos regularly, you'll see that there's often items like ladders and stands in the background to deter Vinny from wanting to fly off me, leave the video, and try to get his little head in that closet to chew boxes. Yeah, you. But Vinny doesn't really like the dogs. He doesn't mind Sandy so much, but he's definitely not going to go over there with Sandy there. So I'm hoping that is what's going to keep him today occupied during this video. Which brings us to the video. Vinny and I would like to welcome you to Should You Get Your Parrot a Mate or a Friend? This is a really important subject and the reason it's so important is because it's much more complicated than you would ever think. I get so many people asking me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube if they should get a mate for their bird. And I also see a lot of comments on parrot videos, even mine, from people in other countries that say their country has what's called a companion law, which is a beautiful law, by the way. This law means that you cannot own one parrot without owning another parrot of the same kind. Well, this is really important because it's amazing. They don't want birds to be lonely. But here's what I'm going to assume, and I could be wrong. I'm going to assume that if they have those laws that you cannot buy a bird alone, you probably cannot sell a bird alone. So I'm going to assume from that that the person selling the birds is selling a bonded and mated pair that isn't going to have any problems. These two birds are not going to have any problems being together. But... <laughs> That brings me to the situation that most of you guys are actually in. You bought one bird. You love your bird. You've bonded. You realize that he's the best companion you ever could have had. You also realize that it's true. They need so much attention. You can't wait to go home every single day and see your bird. But then there's that moment in the morning when you're leaving to go to work or when you just have to leave the house and your little beautiful buddy is in the cage holding on, looking at you, saying, please don't leave me. You're the only entertainment that I really enjoy. And it breaks your heart. His little face, knowing that he wants to come with you and that he's gonna be waiting for you all day when you get home, absolutely breaks your heart. So you're driving to work and you're thinking about it. Oh my God, what should I do? Should I try to work from home? Should I come home earlier? And then you realize I can't change up my entire life. I have to work. And then you think, but I don't want him to be lonely. So what should I do? And then it comes to you. I'll get him a friend, right? I'm here to tell you, don't do it without all the proper research, of course. Remember, birds are not like dogs or cats. They may not entertain each other in the same way that you imagine, which is why I want to save you a lot of stress and a lot of tears. So we created this video. Welcome to 13 things you should know before getting your bird a friend. I'm gonna start with this one because it's scary, it's true, and it happens more often than you think. And when it does happen, it's very possible that it's gonna be too late. So here's what you should know. Even the smallest parrots can be the most aggressive. Lovebirds, for example, have a very bad reputation for killing their mate. Now, I use the term mate loosely because in these situations it's not actually often their mate that they are killing. Sometimes 
you know, the pet store sells you two random birds or a little girl goes in and chooses the blue one and the green one. You don't even know that you don't have two birds interested in each other. And so one bird will begin to attack the other. If the birds weren't bonded as babies, there's always a chance that they're gonna attack one another. So you really, really have to be prepared for that because if they do start attacking one another, it's not going to stop there. Now, imagine you do have two bonded lovebirds that are beautiful mates and have been together for quite a few years. Something happens and one of them dies. Now you're worried about the remaining lovebird. So in your head, the only logical thing to do would be to get your bird a mate, right? No, birds mate for life. I have had people call me way too many times because one of their lovebirds died and they just put a new one in the cage and that bird either killed the other bird because he was being provoked, so he was reacting, or the original bird killed the new bird. So you have to remember that because birds mate for life, they're not just going to accept a new imposter bird. Now, here's another thing you need to know. It's not just lovebirds that are aggressive. Yeah, sure, lovebirds have the reputation. Cockatoos have also been known to be aggressive birds. There's so many cockatoo situations where a cockatoo has attacked another bird so bad or even been randomly aggressive, plucked to the other bird, or taken off a bird's toe. That actually happens a lot. Um, hit him in the head. So you need to consider this. Now, those two birds, I think, would be top of the list for aggressive birds towards other birds, but this is not reserved for just those birds. Cockatiels, lorikeets, conures, parakeets, macaws, and amazons all have been known to hurt other birds. Now, if you have never heard about how common it is for birds to kill one another, then we're here to open your eyes to exactly what kind of parrot owner you are, which is an inexperienced one. But there's nothing wrong with that. That's why you're here, you're here to learn, and that's what makes you and this so great. But that brings me to reason number two. Right, Vinny? Now, you may not be experienced enough to choose the right bird for your bird. I know, you have a parrot, you're a great companion to your parrot, you take the best care of him, you love him, and he's lucky to have you. So, of course, you wanna give him a friend. Well, already, right there is reason to stop and do tons of research before getting a second bird. There are so many dangers to having two birds in your house, which we will get to. But let's talk about you. What are you prepared for? Why do you wanna get another bird? Do you know what to look for? Are you gonna trust the breeder? Will you trust a pet store owner? Do you think they will mate? Do you have a setup for them to mate? Do you think that they won't mate, but they will bond? Or did you imagine that they will be mates, but they won't want to breed? Does your bird want to mate? Or does he think that his mate is you? Did you know that parrots could kill one another? It's okay if you didn't. And it's great that you're here, and it's great that you're about to find out. So, let's get to reason number three the most likely thing that will actually happen when you get your bird a new friend. Your bird won't bond with the new bird. I think that this is the most common situation that you're going to run into if you get a second parrot. Now, before I explain this, let me give you guys some background. Most of the parrots that we all own have been hand-fed and they have been printed on humans. So to us, it kind of feels like they are our little babies, but to them, it feels like we are their mates. 
Now, since our birds were raised by humans, quite often they see themselves as humans and they don't really get interested in other birds. And on top of that, they'll often see you as their mate, which has most likely happened already. Now, keep in mind, parrots are monogamous and they mate for life. So if they have decided that you are their mate, then they are not going to betray you with this imposter that you have now brought into the house, which now will bring us to reason number four. What happens now that you have imposter bird? You now have two birds to bond with. They're not interested in each other like you thought that they would be. You thought at least they would keep each other happy or occupied while you were gone, but that's not exactly the case. Now you were a great companion to your first bird. You loved him, you bonded with him, you took care of him. How can you not do that with the second bird? Well, you were such a great bird owner, of course you're going to do that. So what happens when you have to hang with two birds, make time with two birds, and handle two birds at the same time? May not always be easy. Now you may have to be handling this one with the right hand, massaging his head, while you're kissing this one or massaging this one's head with the left hand. So what do you do now that you have two birds? looking through the cages when you're leaving for work, which is totally not what you were expecting. And now you have a new problem, which brings us to reason number five. Jealousy, aggressiveness, and screaming. Now, depending on how bonded you were to your first bird, your little ball of sweetness may turn himself into an absolute terrorizer, full of jealousy now that you're bonding with the new bird. I mean, he's monogamous, so why aren't you, right? He may begin screaming, biting, plucking out of stress. You may actually find yourself having alone time and hiding yourself from your other bird just so that you can get good alone bonding time with your bird and just so that each one doesn't get super stressed, especially bird number one, because if you remember from my other videos, there is a pecking order. Kind of like this little tantrum that Vinny is throwing right now, giving us a perfect example. So now what have you done? You have split up the free time that you did have to give all of bird number one with bird number one and two. So now you've done, not intentionally, but the opposite of what you were trying to do. You're taking some time away from your original bird and giving it to a new bird when actually you were just trying to give your bird as much time as possible and now your first bird is much more lonelier feeling and stressed, you may be making things worse for your parrot, which brings me to reason number six. Acquiring the new bird's negative habits. Now, maybe you got your new bird to be a companion for your old bird, or maybe you found a bird in need, a bird that was in need of a home that had problems of his own. Now, you guys know I'm all for that parrot rescue. I feel like there's a lack of educated parrot owners and that's why you see so many people that know about birds having multiple birds because there's not a lot, generally speaking, in the world, there's not a ton of people that know about parrots. And the people that do, they know that and so they know that they have to give birds a good home. So you may find yourself in this exact situation where it's you or nobody for this bird because you don't know anybody else around who knows how to take care of the bird properly. Even if it's another bird of a different kind, all the same stuff still applies. Your bird may be bonded to you and 
obsessed with you like we've talked about and the new bird now isn't. So he needs a lot of attention and a lot of specific care. And he may have come with some bad habits of aggression, screaming, or even plucking. And your original bird may be very jealous and pick up those behaviors because he realizes that those behaviors get that other bird results. So you have to be very careful in how you reward your bird and when you give the bird attention. I know people that have had birds that didn't pluck and then started plucking when another plucker came into the flock. It could be because of the stress of the new bird in the flock, but it could also be because of the way that new bird bonded to that other person, their mate. And when that happens, they may pick up the behavior that they notice that the other bird gets attention for. You really need to be aware that this is an absolute possibility. And now that you know that there is a huge chance that your two parrots will not want anything to do with one another, that brings us to reason number seven, which is something very important to think about. They're territorial. So suddenly you have to buy two of everything. What? I thought I was just gonna get this cockatiel and put him in the cage with my other cockatiel and then they would keep each other completely occupied. See, that's the thing. As you can see, in most cases, that will not be the ideal situation. And even if the birds do get along, you cannot risk it by starting off with one cage setup. You're gonna have to start off with two separate cage setups. And keep in mind, if they are never interested in each other and they don't get along, you're going to have to have two play stands, two sets of toys, two sets of cages, two sets of like two spots to hang out in. Like when you're on your computer and you've made your other bird a great spot to chill with you, now you have to have two specific spots to chill with your bird. Your whole life is gonna have to revolve around two. So keep that in mind because it's probably quite a different picture than what you originally imagined. Which brings me to number eight which is the situation that could happen and is probably most like what you actually imagined. The birds do bond, but they're not interested in you anymore. So you got your bird a friend and you miraculously chose the exact partner that your bird was looking for. Well, Guess who's out of the picture now? You are. And in most cases like this, you lost your beloved companion. He may get aggressive towards you when you approach. He may be protective over his partner and not want to have anything to do with you or for anyone. And on top of that, the other bird may not be tame yet and you didn't get much time to know the other bird. So you find yourself missing your original bird companion. Now, speaking of bonding, let's get to number nine. Breeding. Now, I'm not a breeder, I don't breed birds, and I doubt I ever will. I believe that we have to save the birds that we already have and give them great homes, and that's the most important thing for me personally. But I thought that I should address breeding just a little bit, just enough to say this. If you are imagining that there's a chance your birds will breed and have some babies, I just want to let you know that it's not as likely as, let's say, your dog or cat going out and getting pregnant and coming home and having the babies. It's a much more complicated situation. I'm not an expert on breeding, but I feel like I have to say this just so that it's out of your head completely. There's so many things that can go wrong and they may not breed for years. That brings us to reason number two. 10. The wrong mate. Now, 
A lot of times we assume the sex of our bird without DNA testing them. Sure, there are birds like Picasso, which we can tell the sex of just by the colors. And really, whether Cody is a male or a female, I don't actually know. I'm gonna love him no matter what. But if you are trying to pair your bird with a friend, then this can be a really big mistake, not knowing the sex of your parrot and also the sex of the bird that you're getting. I cannot tell you how many times I read about parrots killing each other, kind of like our first reason, only because later the owners found out that they had accidentally put together two females or two males or vice versa, depending on the parrots and how different they are. In my flock, I always find that the males can hang out pretty decently together. George, Vinny, and Picasso were really easy to hang with each other, but then Jersey would come in, she's DNA sexed female, and she would like shake the whole thing up a bit. But that's why it's important to realize that this doesn't just apply for a mate that you are choosing, it also applies for another bird. So you know that um, Picasso gets along really well with Jersey, but he absolutely terrorizes Cody. Cody is my African gray. This guy is a little mustache parakeet. I've never seen Cody move so fast as when he sees Picasso, which goes back to what I'm saying about even the littlest birds can be the most aggressive. And sometimes it's not about choosing a wrong mate for your bird. Sometimes you actually can choose the wrong friend for your bird and it can be very dangerous to have them together, even on the same play stand. So, now we know that even in a friend situation, the most behavioral problems can get escalated, but that brings us to number 11. Hormonal behavior. Now, hormonal behavior may be a main reason why you decided that your parrot companion would need a friend in the first place. If only he had a mate, then you would assume that his hormonal behaviors or aggressiveness would stop because now he's getting what he's deprived of. Well, not so much. And of course, this brings us back to the previous things that we just went over about how most likely your bird will not bond with the other bird in the first place. And more importantly, it can really confuse and stress your bird out much more than you ever imagined. So my Rocky, you guys know Rocky, he's my harlequin macaw. He was living with somebody for like 23 years. That person already had another macaw when she got Rocky. Rocky was a great bird for her for about seven years. At seven years of Rocky being seven years old, the other bird who was a female and Rocky is a male started laying eggs. Now it could also be that this was a very hormonal year for Rocky in general. That's about the time when they get really hormonal. But this other female is there that he is not bonded to, doesn't want anything to do with because we went over how difficult it can be sometimes to get them to bond. And she is laying eggs. So once she started laying eggs, Rocky got extremely aggressive towards his owner. The hormones just went out of control and it was almost impossible for her to deal with. And that led to Rocky being kind of isolated for many, many years, which is why I have Rocky now. So keep in mind, sometimes getting your bird a mate or a friend to reduce his hormonal stress will most likely only worsen the problem. So let's take a look at number 12. Parrot illness. You have got to be really careful when you introduce your bird to a new parrot. That's why there's parrot quarantines. When you bring in a new bird, you're supposed to isolate them for about 30 days. But not only that, if your friend has a bird, you have to be really careful about having bird parties and bringing your bird over or birdie playdates. It's a little bit different than dogs. Now remember, birds hide their illnesses so well because they don't wanna be 
perceived as weak in the wild. So even though a bird may not look sick, it's very possible that he could be and you would never know, which is why you have to be really protective over your birds, especially the ones that you already own. Now, parrots can catch many diseases and they can also give each other diseases like um, psittacosis and polyoma and PDD, so beak and feather disease. It's really important that you are educated before getting a new bird and you're aware of all the possibilities of what can happen when you introduce a new bird to the flock. Which brings me to the last and most important reason, number 13. Why do you want to get a friend for your bird? I hope so much that it's not because you don't have time for your bird. I hope so much that it's not because then you can give your bird less attention because he will be occupied with another bird. I really hope that it came from your heart and you don't want your bird to be lonely and you really, really were thinking of your bird, not about having to spend less time with your bird. I hope that you just want the best for your baby and that's why you came up with that idea, which I think is completely understandable. I see how much you guys love your birds. I love watching you with your birds on Parrot Station. I think that the things you create for your birds is extremely innovative and extremely inspiring. I think so many of your birds are so lucky to have you. But I just want you to remember that little face, that little bird that you think needs a friend and I want you to know that what he really needs is you. That little bird locked in a cage when you leave, he waits for you. Now, with that being said, I don't want to make you feel guilty. I just want you guys to know that you don't need to make your whole life about your bird. You just need to include your bird in your whole life. So remember, please engage them and do not cage them. That is what we were all about. And that is what I leave with you. Follow me on social media. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at Marlene McCohen. You can see my birdies and their story time going all day long among a bunch of other events. Vinny really likes that. You can also follow my Instagram page at Engage Not Cage and share and hashtag your birds with Engage Not Cage. And remember, we have a beautiful community called Parrot Station on Facebook, which I urge you to become a member of. I can see all your birds, introduce yourself, share your birds' pictures. If you don't have a bird, that's totally 100% okay. And remember, tune in every Tuesday for Parrot Tips every Sunday for Storytime Sunday. If you guys are a subscriber and want to be the first to get my videos, click on the bell right next to where you subscribed and it will alert you when I go live and when I make new videos because you will get some notifications. So thank you guys so much. Please subscribe. Thank you for tuning in. Please share this video with other parrot owners. We want to give them the best lives that we possibly can. Bye.